Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us for the session of the K-12 Blackboard Innovative Teaching Series. The K-12 Blackboard Innovative Teaching Series is designed to help K-12 educators reimagine education with Blackboard teaching and learning solutions. The K-12 Blackboard Innovative Teaching Series harnesses the power of our K-12 community of academic leaders, teachers, and other experts to provide relevant, real-time, on-demand, and ongoing professional development opportunities for K-12 educators. My name is Sarah Tomchuk, and I'm a Solutions Marketing Manager for K-12, and will serve as a moderator for this session. And I'm currently logged into Katie Gallagher's room here, so that's why you're saying Katie Gallagher's name is the moderator, but this is Sarah that's leading your session. And thank you to Jenny Reister from our K-12 Marketing team, who will be helping to answer questions today in the chat. We will be joining you for the K-12 Blackboard Innovative Teaching Series, and we're always open to new ideas for topics for this series. And please let me know if you're interested in presenting in a future session. You can just email me there at the email that's provided on the slide. And happy Friday indeed. Each webinar in the series will be recorded, and you would have heard the recording button go at the beginning. If you're looking for the recording, search for the K-12 Blackboard Innovative Teaching Series playlist on the Blackboard TV YouTube channel or going to the tiny URL at this K-12. You'll receive the recording and presentation slides a few days after each webinar by email. In addition, you will receive an invitation to participate in professional learning community on course sites designed to augment this series and create an avenue for ongoing collaboration and dialogue. Please accept this invitation and participate in this new online professional learning community. As you can see, we have many exciting professional development sessions lined up. Please join us on Monday, April 20th for Bringing Learning to Life with Blackboard with Patrick Hart and Adrian Rowe from Wake County Public Schools. And as you know, um, probably by now, you can go to bbbb.blackboard.com backslash k 12 to register for any or all sessions within the series. And that hyperlink is there um, on the top of the slide. And as always, be sure to download the Blackboard K-12 Live app for more professional development that is on demand. And today, Janine Richardson will take us through Reimagine Professional Learning with Blackboard's Innovative Classroom Solution. So are you looking to transform your professional development offerings from the single shot, one size fits all delivery model? In this session, we will discuss how Blackboard's Innovative Classroom Solution can support your district by providing sustained and supported personalized learning opportunities, facilitating professional learning communities, increasing teacher effectiveness, and reducing district costs. Janine Richardson is a K-12 Solutions Engineer with Blackboard. Her focus is on Blackboard's teaching and learning solutions. She is a former educator that had more than 19 plus years of experience in public education. Her previous roles include elementary teacher, school-based technology coordinator, and district level coordinator of instructional technology. Janine holds a Master of Education from George Mason University in Educational Leadership. She is a certified administrator. Janine resides in Alexandria, Virginia with her family. And with that, I am going to pass the reins to you, Janine, and thank you again so much for being on today's call. We're excited to learn from your expertise. Thank you, Sarah. Is everyone able to hear me? Yes, we can hear you very well. Great. Well, good afternoon, and if you're on the West Coast, good morning. My name is Janine Richardson, and I'm very excited to speak to you today to really talk about how you can harness the power of your learning management system to really improve professional learning within your district. So let me go ahead and get started for the day. As Sarah shared with you, my name is Janine Richardson, and I'm a manager in the K-12 Solutions Engineering Group. So what I'm going to be doing today is spending some time really talking to you about some of the experiences I even had when I was working in those K-12 schools. Most recently, I worked in Arlington Public Schools in Virginia, 
in central office where I pretty much managed those digital assets and resources that came into the district. So if something came in that needed to be distributed to teachers, students, or parents, I had to figure out the best way to be able to do that. And I really harnessed that power of the Innovative Classroom solution to do that. So without further ado, I want to talk a little bit about what our session overview is going to be. And there are going to be four main points that we're going to go through today. Really looking at what are some of the aspects and elements as we log into Blackboard Learn that's going to support ongoing professional learning. And then also give teachers some options and choices because we realize personalized learning is another avenue that's extremely important. So we've got to have some choice built into that. But then thinking more about how are we going to do things to transition that model? How are we going to move from that one-stop professional development to those professional learning communities? And that's a really change in practice. And then we'll look at some tools that are built inside at the course level that's going to allow teachers to be more effective in the classroom to monitor student progress. And then most importantly, how are we going to do all that and solve many of the issues that districts face, such as a, redu a reduced budget. So how are we going to reduce those district costs overall? So I'm going to start off talking a little bit about professional development. When you hear that term professional development, if you could type in the chat, what's one of the first things that you think of? What comes to your mind there? Anybody? Ongoing education, geared towards teachers, talking with others, those PD days, study group. Thank you. Well, you guys were right on point when it comes to that. All of those things that you talked about and put in that chat is focused on that teacher. What are the teacher actions happening? So if you'll take a look at that definition there, there are a variety of activities that occur during that time. So whether it's having teachers you know, participate in curriculum writing, having them do things like doing study groups together, or mentoring one another completely focused on the teacher. Lots of teacher actions there. But there's a time and place when that is appropriate, where we're going to have to do those things. But we also have to really kind of merge that so that we can have more of a systematic view of how we're looking at professional learning. So before we jump into Blackboard Learn and we take a look at the, some of those elements, I want to talk about what are going to be some of the benefits that a district is really going to be able to glean from implementing an online professional learning model in, within the district. That first and foremost thing is you're going to have that access to anytime, anywhere learning. These days with schools, we realize that it's difficult to pull teachers out. And not only that, it's impacting the instruction that's going on in the classroom. So providing teachers with avenues to be able to participate in professional learning opportunities both inside of the school day but outside of the school day is really going to give you additional time to spend with those teachers so they have a more in-depth look at during that professional development experience. Some other things that you're going to find that's going to be a key benefit is the fact that your teachers are going to have access to resources long after that professional development is gone. How many times have you gone to a face-to-face -face professional development, they handed you a sheet of paper, and then you went to go back to re research that information, and that paper is long gone. No clue as to where it is. This is going to provide your teachers with that access so that there's that consistent learning. Not that one-stop shop, but instead, I can continue to go back to further my study within a particular topic. And the fact that your teachers are going to be able to collaborate, not just within a school, not within just the district level, but you're going to see opportunities where your teachers are going to be able to collaborate across the country or even across the world. That professional learning in an online format is really going to provide you those opportunities to do those things. 
So without further ado, I'm going to share my screen. And you all should be looking at my Blackboard Learn landing page after login. Are you all seeing that? Be good? Okay, great. So after login, some of the things that you have an opportunity to do with teachers to really support ongoing professional growth are do things such as present content and information to your teachers. That's critical and important. So you can see in this example, there are a variety of modules that are presented to teachers, such as working effectively to integrate a blended learning model within the classroom. Oftentimes we ask teachers to implement different strategies, but they really don't know what it looks like in the classroom. So this is an opportunity for you to provide resources such as case studies, testimonials from teachers, as well as giving them in-depth looks of what things are going to look like within the classroom. Some of those other areas where you're going to be able to support your teachers is provide them access to the resources they need. So whether you're looking at implementing common core state standards in your district or even your state level standards. Building that vision of one place for your teachers to go. A quick and easy way for your teachers to get the information that they need to continue to hone their craft and understand more of what they should be teaching to their students. But then use it as a support for you as well. Put in informal quick voting type scenarios for your teachers. So you can see in this example, a professional development committee is looking to plan their technology symposium or their professional development opportunities that they're going to have for the teachers. And they want the teachers to determine what's going to be the best topic to use. So just simple things like this gives teachers an opportunity to demonstrate some of that teacher choice but then for you to get that feedback to know exactly what are some of the types of professional learning you should be offering to your teachers. So let's jump up and talk a little bit about professional learning and social learning because that's an important aspect of what we would like our teachers to really be doing in the classroom. And that's a lot where that teacher choice comes in. If you have not set up your Blackboard profile, I encourage you to do that because it's a great way to really be able to connect with other users in the community that are looking at using creative ways to really you know, solve some of those problems that we have within the classroom in our schools. And so it's going to connect you to allow you to link with other members that are really looking for ways to engage students. So, in some of those areas of your social learning network, you're going to find opportunities for your teachers to really have some choice into what they choose to learn more about. So this area is called the spaces area. It's an area that is pretty much, think of it free form. Those of you that attend conferences, think of this area kind of as that birth of a feather section. So like-minded individuals that are interested in a particular topic can come together to collaborate and share resources. This area does not have to be limited to a particular district. Your district can open it up so that you're going to be able to really engage and interact with a global community. So as you can see, these spaces provide teachers with an opportunity to choose to become a member of a particular group, to then be able to collaborate and share resources, and then to really become part of a community. So they've got some teacher choice there. So it's an opportunity for them to begin to explore what's important to them and what's going to impact their students and find ways 
of where they're going to be able to engage with those students. In other areas as well, you'll find you've got a global way to communicate and collaborate with other teachers. So this messaging system is completely open. So you can find any other user. So for example, I see some of my former trainees in Arlington Public Schools that have joined the session today. I can really search for those users if they have a profile. I don't know if you've got a profile there, Marie, or not. That oh, doesn't look like you do. But I can find other users in the system. Oh, they didn't do it. And actually write a message to those individuals. And so it's another way to really communicate and collaborate and share without trying to rustle through, I need to find this person's email. If I know there's a particular expert in their topic and they've chosen to share their profile and to open up messaging, I have the ability to communicate with them. So it's that other avenue and vehicle to really be able to do the professional learning. So let me jump in to a sample professional development class. And this class that I'm going to be sharing with you today is from my former district. They gave me permission to share this with you. This is a professional development course that is offered to every new teacher that comes into the district. One of the things that happened within the state of Virginia two years ago is they implemented a brand new teacher evaluation system. This required every single district to go back and to retrain their teachers on how they were going to be evaluated and what were the elements that were going to be, you know, part of that evaluation process. So as you can imagine, for a district, that is a large undertaking to go back and train your current teachers, but then also think about what am I going to do with all of those new teachers that come in every single year? Because those teachers have to know how they're going to be evaluated as well. So what Arlington chose to do was to create an online professional development for every new teacher. And so in the 2013-14 year, there was a requirement that any new teacher that came into the county, they were enrolled in this course so that they could learn all of the aspects of what they were going to need about teacher evaluation. And so this was putting that onus on the teacher to work in this course, whether they wanted to do it before school, after school, it was up to them but it gave them that anytime, anywhere access without impacting student teaching. So that teacher didn't have to come out and then attend a session within the district. And so it's keeping that teacher in the classroom, so really supporting that model. As you can see, it was designed in a way where there were particular timelines for when things had to be completed. So it gave those teachers an opportunity to know exactly when those modules were going to be due. But then also within each of these areas, all of the curriculum resources were available. So whether there were instructional videos for them to watch, access to the handbook, providing them information, all in one location. Building that vision of one place for teachers to access those resources. The other thing you're providing those teachers is you're modeling those best practices. Your teachers, ultimately, what we want them to do is to experience interacting in that online environment as a participant or a student so that they're then going to really make connections on how they can bring those same strategies into the classroom. So, let me talk a little bit about some of those benefits of what the district reaped. There were 242 brand new teachers in the district in the 2013-14 school year. The district had a 98% completion rate. 
So 236 teachers completed this online course within that first year. In 2014-15, there were 308 new teachers, and to date, there are 252 teachers that have completed all four modules that are required, and there are 22 teachers that have completed three modules thus far. And so this is giving the, the Professional Development Learning Office an opportunity to really reach back out to the schools, because what they decided was they weren't going to go back and retrain these teachers. They put that onus at the school level. So what's happening is those individuals that have not finished, they went back to the school and said, okay, either you have your teacher take this online course, or you're going to have to come up with a way to train them so that they understand how they're going to be evaluated. And so we realized that transitioning to an online environment for professional development it may be difficult at first, but there are some things that you have an opportunity to do to make it easier for your teachers. And one of those things is for us to, let me go back to the whiteboard, is to integrate things such as the Blackboard Collaborate system. This is an effective tool that you can utilize to bridge that gap. The very first time you think about implementing online learning for your teachers and looking for those online professional development experiences, it may be difficult. So, because really, think about our education and our careers and how we learn. We learn to be face-to-face -face teachers. So oftentimes, you've got districts that value face-to-face. -face. So this is going to be an opportunity to really bridge that gap especially for those longer professional learning experiences of your teachers. So you've got those one-time shots of what we talked about. You've got opportunities to really transition some of those things online, so whether it's teacher evaluation, another common one that we find with districts that they like to implement, blood-borne pathogens, or things that deal with um, medicine administration. So all of those types of things that we have to do every single year that takes up valuable time when we're together within our schools or within the district are, are easily transitioned to online. And so that's one avenue in a way that you're going to really reap the benefits of using the power of your LMS. But I want to move a little further and really transition from thinking about that one-time professional development to how do we really move and transition? Because we realize there's a change coming. We have to stop getting out of those modes of, okay, I'm going this year, our focus is on math. Next year, our focus is on science. Or we're going to focus on blended learning. Those strategies, we realize, do not work. And so we've got to come up with other ways in which we are focused more on students. And that really is the entire goal of that transition, of moving from talking about professional development to thinking more about professional learning. You'll notice there is a clear, distinct difference when we focus on professional development versus professional learning. I'm going to call out just a few of those words there because I think they're very important to the point. Professional learning, when we move to that model and we implement that within our district, it's a new way of doing business. It's not a meeting. It's a change in culture. And so we're looking for ways for teachers to collaborate together. You'll notice it has to be recurring. It's not that one time, but we have to provide opportunities for teachers to research, to spend time to collaborate together. But at the end of the day, it's all about the students. So if we are not focused on the students, then we are not implementing professional learning. We're doing professional development, those teacher actions. And so there really is that shift. And you have to do that within that mindset. And it's going to be a change in the school culture. So I want to talk a little bit about the work of professional learning communities. 
If you go and do some research online, most often you're going to find the work of Richard Dufour and his wife, Rebecca Dufour. Those individuals have written several books focused on professional learning communities. And there are three main ideas that really drive the work of a district, or a school for that matter. And I want to talk about those and how it really applies to online learning. That first being, what is the purpose of the school? You know, there's that establishment of norms when you implement a professional learning community. And that first one is the purpose. You have to ensure that all of the students are learning at a high level. And I think that's the key thing there, a high level. That second norm that's been established as well is that we are focused on students. It's a student first, and that is our entire purpose of doing that. And so helping all students learn is going to require people to really engage and collaborate together. There's a collective approach there. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to put it in the chat, the authors of the book. The name of the book is Learning by Doing. And so let me put this in the chat for you. And you're going to find there are some wonderful resources there, but really talks about what are going to be some things to really drive your district to really implement a new culture, to move you from those one spots. So it's learning by doing. And that last norm that's established when you are thinking about implementing professional learning communities is you're focused on results. If we're doing something and it does not impact or improve our professional practice, then there's an issue with that. We've got to be focused on results. We have to ensure that when we're looking at data for our students, we're making informed instructional decisions and then we have to respond to student needs. So whether that student is hitting it out of the park with the content and they have a sound understanding, then they should be looking at enrichment. Otherwise, they should look at ways of how are they going to go back and reteach that content to the student. So when we think about transitioning and building a professional learning community, we have many tools that are going to support you within the learning management system. So we already went through and we talked about how you can utilize the learning management system to support professional development, because you understand that is a pillar of a professional learning community. We have to have that cyclical professional development for our teachers. But some areas that we didn't talk about that we're going to go into as well is really thinking about how do we provide the same level of access to curriculum across the district? And you're going to see the many benefits to the learning management system that's going to do that as well. Even ways to really implement common assessments. All of these components that you find as part of professional learning can easily be transitioned to utilizing it in that online environment. And then really providing material support, access to resources for individuals to be able to quickly and easily implement things within their classroom. So I'm going to share my screen again. And this time, we're going to talk just a little bit about professional organizations. So you should be looking at my screen again. And this time, we're going to take a look at an organization. Because within Blackboard Learn, you've got an opportunity to build communities of learners. This is an example of an organization of social studies teachers. And within my former district, this organization was created as a means for the curriculum supervisor 
to push out contact to the teachers, but then also as an opportunity for them to be able to collaborate with the teachers. Again, focused on the fact that there's not enough time, not having an opportunity to spend time with teachers to develop the skills that they need or to share what are some of the best practices within that content area. So within my former district, organizations were utilized. That one-stop shop where teachers could go to access curriculum resources. It also provided them an opportunity to go back and look to see what's happening in other grade levels. Or if you were a specialist and you were looking to make some interdisciplinary connections, this was a great place for you to actually do that and actually have an opportunity to see what's going to be taught. So it really leveled the playing field. All teachers had access to those resources that they needed. And it provided that one-stop shopping for individuals to be able to do that. Some other districts that have done similar things that I encourage you to take a look at would be Sarasota Public Schools. This was a district that transitioned from using ANGEL to Blackboard Learn, but they were looking for ways to offer professional development. And I'm going to drop these in and go ahead and bookmark these resources. It was an opportunity for those teachers to go in, share instructional resources, and what they utilized was called instructional focus guides. So they did one a little different than what Arlington had done. As opposed to this being a resource where the teacher came in and enrolled, each teacher was provided an actual course in which it had not only the curriculum resources in there, but digital components to engage students as well. So building that one-stop shop, and there were many benefits that the district reaped by providing teachers with that same level of access. It gave them the opportunity to go through and easily get access to content. Again, they didn't want teachers going all over. Build that one-stop shop. It's that vision of if you build it, they will come, and they will utilize those resources. One place for them to be able to do that it makes it very easy, a powerful resource for users to be able to do that. Some other areas that you are going to find that you are going to be able to utilize in those organizations is really focus on what you want to do with your teachers. Think about the areas. So what this district had done is they put everything that they had for professional learning. If they had a professional development about a particular topic, those resources came here. Again, providing access to support resources after a professional development occurs. Much easier to do. And it's really building that vision for that ongoing learning. If you look at some of the stats from the National Staff Development Council, which is now Learning Forward, we realized that teachers need at least 50 hours in a particular topic of professional development before they feel comfortable enough to really implement that strategy with students. So we realized that one day for seven hours is not going to cut it. We have to have that systemic professional development that's going to allow teachers to really move over time and to implement new ways of really engaging learners online. So let me jump back to our whiteboard. And I'm going to talk just a little about some new tools that are integrated, that are going to support collaboration over time. How many of you, type in the chat, are using the Dropbox, the assignment engine within Learn with your teachers? Anyone using the assignment engine? So a student can submit the work digitally. Yes. OK, great. Not for teachers, but for students, yes. So let me talk about how this is going to transcend 
some of the discussions that your teachers are currently having about student learning. If we go back to those norms that were focused, that we talked about earlier, it's important for your teachers to have common assessments and to be able to collaborate together. There are tools inside of LEARN that's going to allow you to do that. One of those tools is the anonymous and delegated grading. As you can see from this workflow, it gives your teachers an opportunity to enroll another teacher in their class, but then also to randomly assign them specific sets of student work. So you are transitioning from thinking about my class, my students, to this is our students. They're all of our students. And we're our, we're, it's a responsibility for everyone so that those students are learning at that high level of achievement. So little things such as implementing teachers collaborating this way really supports your measures of transitioning to that professional learning community goes directly into that, and it's going to support that vision over time. Some other areas that you have that's going to make it easy for your teachers to really work and collaborate together is really think about common assessments. Your teachers can have a course where they build a specific math assessment, or they build that social studies assessment, and they deliver it across the team. Now when they come for those team meetings, They've got a specific data point that's in common that they can talk about their students' work and how they've achieved. It's also going to give them that opportunity to really and truly bring it back to student learning, because that's really the goal of transitioning to professional learning communities. They're not going to just say, okay, we all took the data, we all took the test, here's the data. But now what are you going to do about it now that you're looking at that data? Go into your course. Look at reports. Find an opportunity to say, okay, I need to intervene with these students. Talk together collaboratively as a way of determining what are you going to do for that intervention for those students? Or what are we going to do with all of these kids that have really met the benchmark already? How can we provide extension and enrichment opportunities for those individuals? So some things to consider as you're going to those online courses and thinking about the elements within the online course structure. Very easy to implement. These little things to provide that transition of thinking. So you don't want that, it's my students. It's our students, and we all are responsible for their learning. One other area that I did want to focus on is Blackboard Explorer. That is an, an amazing resource that is common across all of our solutions. So whether you are a Moodle's Rooms client or you're using our teacher web page system or Blackboard Learn, it is a learning object repository where you're going to be able to create content and share content providing those same accesses, access to resources. Extremely important. You want to be able to do that. And I'll log into the system shortly and show you that resource as well so that we can talk about how that's leveling the playing field and then another location where you as a district can put content for your teachers that's common and then they can easily bring it into their course. So before I jump into the learning management system again, I want to talk about one other district, Metro Nashville Public Schools. I think this is a great example of a district that went from thinking about, oh my goodness, I have to do professional development for my teachers because they have to learn about common core standards to really taking that step back and saying, okay, we've got some specific needs. We need to offer professional development to our teachers. We need to engage our students so that they're coming to school. We need to improve our graduation rate. How are all these things that we are doing going to combine together to really address student learning and impact that student learning? 
So as you can see, what ended up happening was the district decided they were going to leverage the Blackboard Innovative Classroom solution as a means to offer courses to students within a virtual environment, to train all of their teachers about common core standards and how it was going to impact instruction, but then also talks about ways that they can provide engagement to their students by integrating technology, a cohesive look of how they were going to do that. So if you look at those results at the end, within one year, over five years, they grew their full-time enrollment within their virtual school 5,000%. They had a significant cost savings by offering 72 unique classes. And take a look at that graduation rate. At the end of the day, that's what it's about. How are we impacting student achievement? And they saw 32% increase in graduation rate. So the, the procedures and policies that they had in place and their norms of doing business had to change. They transitioned and looked at how they could utilize instructional technology to really impact the student learning at the end. And they were extremely successful. Take a look at that cost savings for professional development of training 5,000 teachers. They saved over a million dollars in professional development costs. Those are the types of things you want to consider when you are utilizing your learning management system as well as your interactive web conferencing system to engage teachers. Because at the end, we want to focus on that student engagement. So let me show you quickly Blackboard Explore. Are you seeing my screen now? I'm going to jump into a class. And I want to show you how this is a powerful resource for your teachers. Blackboard Explorer is a resource that your teachers are going to have inside of their course. So when they are going to build content, they're going to see it as part of a mashup tool. Within Blackboard Explorer, your teachers are going to have that opportunity to either create content, and you can see there's a variety of different types of content that they can create. And any time that they choose to create the content, they even have an opportunity to put a Creative Commons license on it. So that teacher can determine how they Welcome to the Blackboard. You can see there are a variety of resources here for a teacher to easily put in. A teacher has an opportunity to preview the resource. They can take a look at the engaging content. What's nice about these resources is oftentimes it will provide you with follow-up assessments to do with the students, but different ways to engage the students in the content. So they may have to read an article, or they may watch a particular video. But I want you to see how easy it is for your teachers to add to their course. Just 
by selecting that Add to Course, it's going to bring up the scaffolding of their course they're currently in. If they wanted to add the content to more than one course at a time, they could do that as well and bring that course up. And it's going to go to both of those at once. So I'm going to select the Add button. You're going to receive that content was successfully added, but I've got a navigation path back to my course. So if I select this and take a look at the resource, I now have Adams available. So it's a quick link for my students to access this digital content. One of the benefits of this is we have to put instructional resources that are high quality in the hands of teachers. One of those things that's really a pillar in thinking about transitioning from professional development to professional learning. We have to offer instructional resource support. And utilizing Blackboard Explore is one vehicle to be able to do that. Some other resources you'll find there are resources created by teachers. There is digital content that is loaded there from Discovery Education, from the Khan Academy, and it's all of high quality. We have to come up with ways to provide teachers an opportunity to review content, to evaluate it for its effectiveness, and then to easily bring it in. And so it's breaking those walls down and providing those opportunities for your teachers. Quick and easy, they've got access to those supports. Some other areas you may want to consider as well is really think about what digital content providers are you going to offer and provide integrations with within the learning management system. Still being that resource support that is important and appropriate for professional learning, but make it easy for your teachers to build that content. So I can go to a particular partner content. I can search for content whether it's Discovery Education, and this is another one of our partners that we have a tight integration with, that's going to provide teachers with the digital assets and resources that's aligned to standards that they can bring into their classroom. So I can search here as well. I can locate the resource. As soon as I decide I'm going to share it, Power of integrations there. I now select Blackboard. Very similar, it's going to bring up where you want to put this location in your course. Where does this digital asset, where you want to place it. And then I go ahead and click Submit. And now my students have access to that resource. So you can see, we are looking for ways to make it easy. You must provide those teachers with resources and assets that they're going to be able to quickly and easily put into their classroom. So I'm going to pause for a moment and see if there are any questions out there. For comments? Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm – you always learn something new when you go into Blackboard. That's true. There are so many things and resources there that you're going to really be able to utilize. So I want to review just a moment and go back to what was it that we – our intent was for today's presentation. Today what we spent time discussing were ways that we could find sustained professional development. What are we going to do to transition from that one-stop shop to offering opportunities for teachers to utilize resources such as those spaces areas where they can do some of those personalized learning opportunities. But then thinking about what are we going to do to transition from going from that one-time shop to 
adding those elements of a professional learning community. Because remember, it's not a meeting, it's a way of doing business. How can we implement that in the online environment? And what are some of those tools? So I encourage you to go and take a look at that assignment tool, because that's a great one to really implement with your teachers, especially since they should be looking at those common data sets to make informed decisions about what they need to do next with their students. And really thinking about the fact that we are going to provide opportunities to save teachers time. They don't have to go all over the place to look for great instructional resources. Use that power of that learning management system to build that one-stop shop. So whether they're doing a professional learning opportunity or they're looking for resources to implement with their students, they want one place to go for that. And overall, we want to save the district costs. And we're going to see lots of cost savings with that. Because now you don't have to print out binders for scope and sequences and things like that, because your teachers can access all of those resources online. So I'm going to see if there are any questions at this time. Okay, well, I'd like to thank you all, and I'm going to turn this back over to Sarah if there aren't any questions. I'm going to put in one other resource for you in the chat, and that is a research on can online communities foster professional development. Many of the things I touched upon today are covered in this article, and I encourage you to really read it and think about what they're saying there but then also think about what are some of those tools that are inside of the learning management system to really support you with that. So that link is there for you as well. Hey, thank you so much, Janine. Truly, truly enjoyed your session. Um, and it looks like the link there doesn't work. So I'll let you take a look at that, Janine, and I will wrap up here. Um, okay. So as I mentioned earlier, be sure to download the Blackboard K-12 Live app for more professional development on demand. We have a lot of great sessions from BB World last year, as well as some of the additional big sessions and videos that have been captured at our different on-site um, regional events. So you can um, be sure to download there. Um, and we'll be sending out these slides so you can get that download link. And then, um, thanks again for participating in, in this specific session, and please let me know if you're interested in presenting or if you have ideas um, for what you want to have presented. You can um, access me on Twitter at scomcheck1, or you can email me. And again, you'll receive the recording and presentation slides a few days after each webinar by email. In addition, you'll receive an invitation to participate in professional learning community designed to augment the series and create an avenue for ongoing collaboration and dialogue. Um, just be sure to accept this invitation and participate in this new online professional learning community. Again, please be sure to join us on Monday, April 20th for Bringing Learning to Life with Blackboard with Patrick Hart and Adrian Rowe from Wake County Public Schools. You won't want to miss this session. Um, thanks again so much, and we're going to stop the recording now, but we'll hang tight here in the collaborate session in case anyone does have any questions. And Janine, thank you again for your expertise and great presentation. You are welcome. Um, just one thing to, let me see. As you are accessing the last link that I just posted, you're going to get a message that says read file. There's a button that you can click on, and that should download the file for you of the research article. Okay, great. Thanks for that clarification.